it's raining in Manila, hindi kita maririnig. So I'll be waiting in Manila, kahit di ka nababalik. Meet my new friend, Jeff Bryant. Jeff is a seasoned musician, renowned for his cover performances. Hailing from Canada, just like myself, Jeff's journey took an unexpected turn when he encountered the hospitality of the Filipino people, igniting a deep appreciation for the culture. This passion has recently led Jeff to embark on a trip to the Philippines, where he is eager to share his music with the local community. If you'd like to hear Jeff's music yourself, I will leave links to his social media below. It was a privilege to chat with Jeff, jumping into interesting topics such as the vibrant busking scene in Manila, the symbiotic relationship between music and language acquisition, and lots more. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for reaching out. You know, I'm so glad to meet you. You too. It's such a pleasure to meet you because you were a source of inspiration for this trip for me to the Philippines and for me learning the song Raining in Manila. So I want, want to make sure that you know that. Wow. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I mean, you, you sent me some music maybe last week or maybe a little bit earlier. I'm not sure. And since then, I've been I've had a, a chance to, to check out your stuff. It's it's great. I mean, you Thank have you. such a great voice. Of course, the raining in Manila. You did a cover version of a song by Lola Amor. Is that right? That's exactly right. In January, Coldplay was in Manila to do a concert. And when they play around the world, they tend to do something fun to involve, you know, people where they are. And I think they played two nights here and one night they invited Lola Amor to play this song, which my understanding was that was like a huge hit last summer and continues to be a huge hit. So a Filipina Canadian friend of mine had posted that in her stories on Instagram and it kind of stopped me in my sort of like Instagram, you know, scrolling through tracks and I thought, oh, that's a great song. And maybe, maybe it's possible for me just to learn the chorus. You know, maybe, I don't know, I haven't tried. And I'm so glad that I did. I have to tell you that the inspiration for me doing that was watching your reels and seeing the utter delight of Filipinos and Filipinas when they see the effort that you've put in to speaking their language and basically, you know, showing appreciation for them. I thought, oh, there's a musical equivalent to that, maybe. Filipinos have such a unique response to that. I enjoy learning languages. I love languages. Tagalog isn't the only language that I've learned, but it's the only language that kind of elicits that kind of reaction from people when I speak it. Uh, the musical component, of course, is there. I mean, karaoke is like a national sport in the Philippines. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, if you want to be a part of Filipino culture in the entertainment world, a lot of people have the expectation that you're either going to sing or you're going to dance. It's kind of like <laughs> I'll speak with Filipinos and I'll say, hey, I do YouTube videos. I speak Tagalog and they'll be like, well, do you sing? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't sing. That's not, that's not my thing. It's like, well, do you dance? I'm like, no, I just, I just do this. This is all I do. I'm sorry. No pressure, Jared, but this makes me think that you and I could be a formidable duo because we would just take turns. I would do the singing, you would do the speaking, the two-headed Canadian monster. Sure, yeah, we, we could do that. We could lean into our strengths because exactly. my strength is definitely not singing. That's not what I do, but... You've seen me speak Tagalog, but have you considered learning it yourself? Allow me to introduce my Beginner's Tagalog course. With 10 in-depth video lessons, this course serves as your ultimate entry point to mastering the fundamentals of the Tagalog language. Enjoy lifelong access, not only to the video lessons, but also the corresponding PDF vocabulary sheets that will help you practice new words and internalize useful sentence structures. This course is my passion project, inspired by the desire to provide a resource I wish I had when I began my Tagalog journey. Ready to learn? Check out the link in the description for more details and seize this opportunity to make Tagalog a part of your story. Now back to the video. But yeah, that's right. You're, you're also a, a fellow Canadian. Yeah, so I was born in Calgary myself. And then I moved to Victoria when I was a kid. And I've lived around the country. And I've been in Vancouver for over 10 years now. Yeah. And welcome to Vancouver, by the way. I saw that recently that you'd made that, that move. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful city. Lots of Filipinos here as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And of course, that was a big part of my inspiration. Also, there's a few things that converged in sort of this like slow moving and yet somehow sudden epiphany in January for me to come to the Philippines. 
conditions. And that was a factor is that in the last 10 to 15 years living in Vancouver, I've had occasion, of course, to make Filipino friends and just to like encounter Filipinos in day to day life. And the thing I always noticed, but didn't really stop to think through was, and of course, it's a generalization, but it's from my experience, almost entirely true. A lot of laughing, a lot of smiling, a lot of open heartedness, playfulness, appreciation for music and singing. And these are all things that I greatly admire in anybody. So I just thought to myself, maybe if I go to the Philippines, I will meet even more people that are that way. Yeah, you know, we're lucky in Canada as well that we get to have that exposure to other countries without even leaving. Like, yeah, we really that, are. That love that or that interest at least that you have in the Philippines started here in Canada, right? A lot of people don't have that opportunity. And you make such a good point there that relates to my story also because in the past year or so, I've been busking at YVR Airport in Vancouver. You know, I've had a dream to play music around the world probably for like 25 years, really. And when I'm at the airport in Richmond, I realize, oh, I'm actually 50% of the way to the rest of the world here. You know what I mean? Like psychologically, it was a slow moving epiphany, as I say, that came to a head in January. January when I was playing at the airport and there was this one woman that was standing watching. You can just feel it as a performer. You can feel it when somebody's heart is open. She came to speak with me and as she came closer, I thought, I think she's from the Philippines. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she is. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I think she is. I'm going to ask her, excuse me, are you from the Philippines? Yes. Anyway, we had an awesome chat for like 20 minutes and she said, you should go to the Philippines. And you know, just one of those moments in life rather than saying, yeah, yeah, I should maybe one day I'll do that. Whatever I said to her, I should go to the Philippines. And then shortly thereafter, I was walking to my car. It's on my Instagram. I shot a video saying, I met this woman. It was amazing. It just it made me feel so great. I'm thinking of going to the Philippines. Should I go? I think I'm going to go. And just last night, I was hanging out with my friends. I'm like, check out this video. I had a dream. I followed it. And here we are now friends. And I really credit the Philippines and the Filipino people with helping me to find a path to follow my heart. I think I've heard you say that you have a Filipino heart kind of feel like I have a Filipino heart too. Yeah, it's a it's a common thing with people that have a passion for the Philippines. They kind of, you know, identify as someone that, you know, maybe in a different life or something <laughs> was yeah. from there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit jealous of you because as we speak, you are in the Philippines. Boots I on the ground. You were here you're there. Me. Yeah, I me too. So you were here. I, you know, I dream of going to the Philippines. That's going to be uh, on the agenda sooner rather than later. I know it's the, it's the natural conclusion or maybe not conclusion, but next step of what I'm doing. I need to end up over there at some point so i'm jealous of you how has your experience been how long have you been there so far i've been here about a week and i'll be here for two more weeks and just to what you just said i will say i mean you can imagine yourself but i'll just affirm it's so obvious <laughs> to me that when you come here it will be extraordinary for you because it's extraordinary for me without speaking the language and what could be better to connect with people than to speak in in their language even though of course many filipinos do speak english it's just it's just a display of your respect and your interest every day that i've been here i've played music every day that i've been here i've made a true friend and i, I want to make a, a point here of saying the generosity of my filipino friends is extraordinary i mean for, for example i brought a guitar with me from Canada and I haven't really had the chance to use it yet. So, some of the buskers have been generous enough to say, yeah, come play a couple songs, which is its own story, already amazing. But he's like, yeah, I'm gonna come down, bring all my gear, set it up, you're gonna play for, for two hours. Just giving me this opportunity to play as if he's my brother. And that's kind of why I feel like now he is my brother. You had other experience traveling before you went on this trip. You're, uh, you're interested in that, you've done that before. Yeah, when I was younger, I placed a lot of value on going into the world, especially being from an island. Vancouver Island, Victoria is extremely beautiful and I actually would love to live there for the rest of my life at some point. But when you're a teenager and you're really interested in music and culture, you know, you want to go into the world. But, you know, in my 30s with my music career, kind of went through a period of time, I think like maybe a lot of artists do, where it's like, you know, it's only gone so far. I'm not like extremely successful. So I guess in a way it was a bit of a bust. I should probably fall back and get a real job or something along those lines, right? And then in my late 30s, some things happened where I kind of clued into the idea that that's a fallacy. You don't know when your life's going to be over. And while you're here, you, you have to follow your heart, even if it's very scary, you've got to do it. And that's really um, fueled me to now try to combine the two. I want to resume going around the world, but it's got to be with the mission of 
connecting with people playing music. The big dream is for me to be based in Vancouver or Victoria, but spend the majority of the year doing what I've done the last week here in, in Manila. I've had a lot of experience with Filipinos here in Canada over the last like eight or 10 years. And I feel like I understand the culture. I feel like I understand the people, right? And, and one of those steps for me, of course, was learning the language, which always brings you closer to the people. And so I feel like I've picked up on a lot of things, just kind of being immersed in it. But I do have this thing in the back of my head that's kind of going, yeah, but the Philippines is going to be different. It's going to be mm. different than what you're used to because Filipinos in Canada don't represent every Filipino. How will I assimilate to the culture there? And will it be more overwhelming than I'm, than I'm expecting it to be? What has your experience been like knowing Filipinos before you went and now being in the Philippines itself? My experience, I mean, it's it's exactly the same. When I think about the people I know in Vancouver, the friends I have there and the friends I have here, it's all the same characteristics. It's completely parallel. So I haven't seen any distinction in terms of the relationships I have. And then, of course, as you'll know from traveling, it's like any country you go to, go to, it starts with the distinction between like the biggest city and the smaller towns because generally in the bigger cities, people are more uptight and the rat race or whatever it is, the pace it's less laid back. So that's gonna be true anywhere you go. And even within Metro Manila, which is a giant metropolis that's incredibly dense, there's gonna be different, like so many different versions of life within, in particular, this city. So it's gonna be a question, well, where are you in the city? And like the way that I'm kind of naturally geared is language forward. I like languages, I'm interested in them. And something that I think is, is funny, it was a comment on one of my TikToks that I made where I went into this uh, kind of restaurant and I, I was trying to buy something and I wanted to have an interaction with you know the, the lady behind the counter. And they have these, uh, basically like a deep fried banana with a, some brown sugar on top and it's called turon. And I went in there and I said uh, like, you know, what is that? And they were explaining to me what it is. And I go, oh, okay, sure, yeah, let me have one of those. And we're doing this in Tagalog and so the reactions come from that. That. And, and I, I saw one of the comments and it said, how is it that he speaks Tagalog, but he doesn't know what Turon is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's kind of funny. Like most people do it the other way where they're like, they have an exposure to the culture and the food and whatever else. And then through that, they kind of learn the language. Sometimes I feel like I did it backwards where I was like, just really into the language. But then all of these kind of details of like, this is like Filipino street food. Well, I have no idea what Filipino street food is because I've never been in a street in the Philippines. <laughs> you know? And from my point of view, thank God. God, you did it the wrong way, backwards, however you want to characterize it, because that's what makes it so intriguing for us and so inspiring for us. That's the source of inspiration because it reveals the opportunity through technology to take a great interest in a country before you even get there and hit the ground running. Actually, last night, by the way, I was hanging with a couple local friends and I was telling them that we would be chatting today. And so I showed them some clips and they're like, He's half, you can tell. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't think he's being devious at all. Some people might even be like slightly disbelieving. People try to kind of fit me into a box a little bit. That's how the human brain works is we're trying to kind of categorize the things around us, right? If I never spoke Tagalog, they would never say that I'm part Filipino or right, Asian or anything, right? right? As right. soon as I speak Tagalog, mm -hmm. they're like, wait a minute. Now that right. I look at it again, I'm pretty sure you're half. I want to take it back to Raining in Manila. Yeah, that was the first song that I heard that you sent me. You're not unfamiliar with doing covers. Is that part of your kind of repertoire? Yeah, cover music is basically my, my career, you know? So I have in the past been an original musician as a career, but for the most part in the last 10 plus years, I make a living in Vancouver and sometimes travel elsewhere in the country as a professional cover musician. As far as the language aspect of this, I was in a, a, a cover band for about, about 10 years in Vancouver where we'd play weddings, corporate events, etc. Sometimes at the weddings, we would do a song in another language. So the ones that I'd done were Italian, Spanish, and Hebrew. And so actually, I did have some orientation for the premise of me singing in a language that I either just barely speak or don't speak at all in the case of Hebrew, for example. I knew that, well, it's imperfect, but actually when it comes to language, especially for somebody like me who's a little bit phobic of diving in with learning another language, it's a really convenient map because even just things like int intonation, you can learn a word in another language, but it's up to you in the context of why you're saying the word to find the melody of the word. Whereas if you're learning a cover song, not only do you have the word, but you have the execution of the word designed for you. You figure out the phonetic, 
version of all the sounds. You don't bother to try to learn the language yet. And then you do it in sections and you do it very slowly. I just thought, can I do this with this language? I'll, I'll see about the chorus. So I worked on that and then I performed it at YVR at the airport in Vancouver. And then I uploaded that as a reel. There was, you know, a lot of interest and a lot of people were saying, where's the rest of the song? And I thought, oh, oh. I was scared and excited because I know there's no way I've come this far to say, oh, I'm too afraid to do the rest of the song. And so the, the chorus is maybe like 10%. So the other 90%, I had two friends that helped me. We had a phone chat for three hours. We go through syllable by syllable to just get it as, as good as it could be. My goal was for people to understand the words, even if there's an obvious Canadian accent. I mean, I think you sound great in it. Well, that's really cool to hear. Almost everybody in my life speaks at least two languages. And I don't know if you have friends like me who speak one language only, but I kind of compare this to learning how to play a musical instrument or to sing, for example. Most people that I know are terrified to sing. They spend their whole lives never de dealing with it. And it's a shame. Same thing with language. What a shame to not be open to learning another language when it could open up doors in your life. And that's me with language. I studied a bit of French and Spanish in school, but I've never crossed that threshold into really going for it. So when I come here, I think about the opportunity to connect more fully by speaking Tagalog. And even as I say that word, I'm like, how I'm saying that word versus how you say the word tells me the distance that I need to go. As a musician, I think that you're probably very focused on the phonetics of a language. I mean, and that's important for sure. That's important. It's not the only thing and it's not the most important thing. As a foreigner speaking another language, nothing has to be perfect. You can make a lot of sacrifices and still be understood. At the end of the day, that's really what we're after. We want to understand and we want to be understood. We want communication. And so as a musician, you probably want want to nail those notes or whatever the, the yeah, equivalent yeah. would be, right? You know, if you say Tagalog versus Tagalog versus Tagalog, it doesn't really matter. Filipinos will know what you're saying. And so I think people do let that get in the way of speaking other languages too. They want to be perfect. That's me. That's me. And I believe that's most people where you just don't want to feel silly or something. When you um, went over the lyrics of that song, were you just trying to nail it phonetically or did you learn the meaning of the words at the same time? I found a translation so I understood the story, the context of the song. And I was kind of thinking, oh yeah, line by line, I'll really like internalize what it all means. And I thought, you need to pick your battles. <laughs> Focus entirely on this challenging task of making the sounds. And then over time, you can think about doing things like, for example, memorizing it. But yeah, I realized at some point it's like, okay, one thing at a time, you know. A lot of people will compare m music and language together, like I think you did a, a minute ago. There is some overlap, it seems to be, between kind of a language-orientated mind and a musical mind. And uh, I've talked to other people about that. My sister, for one thing, is a musician, and she tells me all the time, if you wanted to play music, you could probably do it really well. I have a hard time believing that in my case, but I understand the concept that maybe it's using a similar part of the human brain. I understand that connection. I don't use music in my language learning. I don't know why, it, I just don't find it helpful for me personally. A lot of people do, and that's great. And so when I listen to music, it's usually quite foreign to me. I don't have a lot of hours in, you know, listening in to Tagalog music. And so I don't understand it very well. And that seems to be a trend in other languages that I've that I've learned as well or practiced where I'm like, I don't really get the music. You know, I commend you for, you know, taking a song on a song head on, especially in Tagalog, where sometimes the vocabulary they use is a little bit antiquated and not quite what you're going to hear on the street as well. So you're starting in the deep end. You know, so to say. <laughs> yeah, everybody learns differently. Whatever works, obviously, what's working for you. But coming back to what we we're saying before about like karaoke culture and love of music, and people asking me to sing, you know, it'd be funny for us, like, before you go, just to have like a session where maybe like I coach you to just learn like the chorus of it could be Rain Manila or any given song, even if that's, you know, maybe terrifying for you if you're not totally comfortable singing. But if, if you just had that in your sleeve, that would be a fun way to address this desire or expectation. Come on, you're in the Philippines, you got to sing. And it, it would just take a little bit. It's not like you have to perform the full song. I do find it terrifying to sing. I am in that group. And I've experienced that here in Canada, going to Filipino parties. And inevitably, the karaoke is going to be coming out at one point or another. <laughs> They're playing these songs and then the mic comes over and they go, Garrett, go ahead, go ahead. And I'm like shaking. I'm like, I don't want to do it. Because yeah, it's so I'm like, intense. I don't want to. It's going zero to it's 100. I mean, singing feels like something that's really 
personal, at attached to who we are. I can sit at a piano and bang some keys and I don't feel bad about myself if it doesn't sound good. But if I'm singing, it's like somehow and it's, it's an extension of myself. And I do think that language is the same way. No one wants to sound stupid and everyone knows what it sounds like to be eloquent in their native language. Right. So to put that exactly. aside and say, I'm going to speak like a four-year-old for the next 20 yep. minutes in whatever language I'm learning, I think that's similar to the singing the fear. I think so too. It's about vulnerability. It's like, I'm going to show what I am and how imperfect I am. But even though I feel that way, I'm still going to put myself in the line of fire. It's an act of courage that I greatly admire and derive inspiration from. It's different when once you've accomplished something, you've learned how to sing, you can play the guitar, you can speak another language. You have the advantage of being able to see over the horizon a little bit. People are like, oh, I could never learn a language. And I'm like, I know you can. I've, I've been there and I've seen the other right, side. I, I know right. you can do this. And then it becomes easier even to do it within yourself. You know, like I'm assuming when you first started learning how to sing, you weren't expecting that you were going to be singing in Tagalog in Manila. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Definitely not.